Hey guys, I'm super excited about this one. Check this out. This is a 2011 Subaru Impreza STI. And as you can see, it's pretty dirty. It's been sitting outside for like a year and a half or so. And the owner decided it's now time to donate the vehicle. A very selfless thing to do. The charity that was chosen was the Special Olympics. So the Special Olympics and their partners, ARS, reached out to me and said, hey, would you be willing to detail this car to bring the value up before we sell it so we can get the maximum proceeds for the charity? Absolutely no problem, I would love to do that. Now what's even cooler is I'm having Brett Glazer come in and actually help me with the detail. Now he's won multiple gold medals, he's from Connecticut, and he is a very distinguished Special Olympic athlete. I am so excited, so grateful to have him here. Wow, that's one dirty vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be a great one today on this episode of Drive and Protect. As you can see, the Subaru is quite dirty and it looks like some fuzzy friends spend a great deal of time on the interior, but these cars have a cult-like following and for good reason. The 2011 WRX STI comes with a 2.5 liter horizontally opposed boxer four-cylinder with 305 horsepower, six-speed manual, quick ratio rack and pinion steering, beefier fenders, larger wheels that are positioned slightly outward, and of course, the multi-mode driver control differential version of the all-wheel drive system that makes this car a dream car for the weekend warrior rally driver out there. Now, a few years back, I found a 1984 Porsche 944 that was left unregistered for 19 years. So I cleaned it up and then I found a new home for it. And that was all done through a charity as well. But this time I wanted to learn a little bit more about how this all works. All right, Emily, explain a little bit how car donation works and more importantly, how does the actual funds go to the charity? Sure, yeah, so I work for ARS. We run the car donation programs for some of the nation's best charities, Habitat for Humanity, UNICEF, CARE, American Cancer Society, and who we're gonna talk about today, which is Special Olympics. Yep. Um, super exciting, so people all over the country donate their cars. We take them, we pick them up from your house, they don't have to be running. So we sell them, right? Take the funds out to you know, tow the car, sell it, and then um, more than 80% goes back to the charities to support the great work they do. And where, where is that statistic, like in terms of other yeah. places? Is that high, is that low? We are the best in the industry. You can check it out in the California State Attorney General report. Uh, the industry average is like 40% return. To, uh, it's, it's horrible. Really? Yeah, it actually makes me nauseous to think about it. Uh -huh. You know, we really believe in the work that we do. There's a lot of value left in cars. A lot of people feel super connected to their car, super connected to the charity of their choice. And then it's a perfect marriage to raise a lot of money. So Emily, walk me through the step-by-step -step process. I have a car, it's been sitting outside. My son went to college. It's just like, I gotta get rid of this thing. Yeah. What do they do to actually get the money to the charity? Sure, so I would recommend going to cardonationwizard.com. Mm -hmm. uh, you go on there, you pick your brand, uh, wherever you really want the money to go and the mission that you wanna support. Uh, you fill out a little bit of information, super easy, information about you, information about your car, how many miles, what condition is it in, is it drivable, is it not, you know, kind of details there. Do you have there. to deliver it to you? Nope. We're going to come pick it up from your house. So that all goes to our center. We basically like triage the car and figure out where to go. We call the tow agent. We get it um, at absolutely no cost to you. We take it, we sell it, and return more than 80% of the funds to the charity of your choice. So Larry, this particular car was donated to Special Olympics, yep. right? Super dirty, it's gross. Yes. We know that you doing doing your thing on yeah. this car and getting it in pristine condition is gonna raise as much money as possible for Special Olympics, which is super cool on its own. However, yeah. super exciting. Uh, we have a Special Olympics athlete here today who's awesome. gonna help you work on the car. He's a global messenger, he's a tennis player, he's a gold medal winner, wow. and he's here in Connecticut. So this is he, good. he is gonna come in. And I certainly gonna, need a lot of help yeah, on this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This, is, uh, this car is dirty, and um, I think he's gonna really take it to the next level with you. Right, so. I appreciate it. Awesome. This is so exciting. Yeah. Brett. Hey, Larry. Good how to are see you? you man. Good to see in. you. Thank you for having me. No problem. Now, check that out. Wow, that's one dirty vehicle. <laughs> Come take a look. So this is a Subaru Impreza STI, completely filthy. It's been sitting outside for like a year. Wow. Clearly disgusting, right? Disgusting. So we got to clean this thing up. Yeah. Now you can see mud absolutely everywhere. So we're gonna have to do a, a quick power wash of that. But before that, yes. I heard that you have a ton of gold medals. Uh, yes, uh, about uh, 18 at my house and uh, I hide them so no one can get them. <laughs> what sport are you? Uh, uh, tennis. I love tennis, uh, singles and doubles. Nice. Any other sports you work uh, on? Not right now, but I want to get more involved with uh, other sports and uh, see how I do. All right. Well, the big question is, have you ever power washed a car before? No, never. Are you ready to try it? Let's do it. All right. I'll show you. What's really cool is I've hidden it inside here. 
Oh, wow. Neat, right? Very cool. Down here. And so what happens is you take this out. We're gonna pull all the hose out. Give yourself some extra length here. So walk all the way around the car. Then come down and I turn it on. You'll see it turn green. Yep. We take the wand, pull this back, and you slide it in. Oh, that's awesome. At the tip here, same thing. You have a little nozzle, right? And yep. each one of them has different um, uh, patterns. Oh, all right, just like a shower head. Exactly. Right. And so you, you push this uh, rubber, so yep. in case you hit the car, it doesn't scratch it. Yeah. Now the one thing that you do, and I tell everybody is, when you're working with a power washer, before you spray the car, let's say a Bentley or yeah. a Subaru, very sensitive paint, yeah. you pull the trigger and you point it at the floor. Make sure every once in a while, yeah. this tip will fly off. All right, and that's the main reason why you're doing that. That's the main reason why we do it. So let's yeah. come over here, I'll show you how to do it on the door. All right. So let's say I'll do this back section in here. Yep. When you're working on a car, you always work top down, because obviously the water's gonna be on top, and then it's gonna carry everything down. So if we start it at the bottom, you're just gonna make more of a mess. All right, right, that makes sense. So you come down, we'll just do this panel here. Now I'm holding it about 12 inches away from the paint. All right. And you're gonna work a pattern. Left to right. All right. I was shocked when you put it through right here because I was afraid it was going to go inside the... No, uh, it, it's, it's going to go inside uh, the door jams. Yeah. And that's a good thing right now because you right. flush all that out. Oh, yeah. But the right. main key with power washing is like uh, pretending I was pulling the trigger now. Yep. You, you don't want to be this close. Of course, yeah. And you don't want to be this far away. because mm. So you really want to be about a foot. All right, and because if you're further away, then it would just spray everywhere. Yeah, it, well, it's spraying everywhere, and it's not really giving any pressure. All right. So the idea is to, to find that sweet spot, and yeah. the sweet spot's about 12 inches. All right, cool. Sound good? Very cool. You ready to rock and roll? Let's give it a go. All right. So with that, Brett Power washed the dirt, mold, yeah. and grime off the paint and out of the seams. You see it all sprinkling down the yeah. floor there? That's, that's, this is awesome. Yeah. This is a lot of fun. Power washing is my favorite part of cleaning the car. Okay, now that we've power washed years of grime off the car, it looks a thousand times better, right? Thousand times better. All right, now we're gonna soap it up. So what I'm using is a foam cannon. In the foam cannon, we're gonna be putting foam cleaner, which is soap. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, extra kick. This is called Boost Winter oh, Wash. Cool. The idea here is we're really gonna get a lot of cleaning power. Fill this up, put some water, put it on the foam cannon, and now you have to soap the entire car. All cool right, with that? Let's do it. All right, all right. First things first, put some soap in. Fill this bad boy up. So we do that and maybe a smidge more for good luck. Now, this is the fun part. All right. Now we're gonna go, same thing. We're gonna go top to bottom. We'll start here. All right. And you're basically painting the car with soap. All and right. we're gonna let it sit for a little bit because all the seams, creases, cracks, crevices, yep. all that kind of dried up uh, mud and, and gunk. And then it eats it, right? Yeah, it, it, so it softens it up. So when we go in and you and I start washing, it yep. makes it easier to clean. Very cool. All right, foam her down. All right. like to see a lot of circles right. because what happens is if it, any dirt gets in there yep. you create circle scratches all right. and they're much harder to get out than straight line and so we go side to side side to side all right. yep gentle i'm not really pushing down hard right. just enough to hold it so it doesn't slide off tell me this isn't fun this is very fun <laughs> All right, so the next thing you want to do is grab one of these yep. brushes. So we, we did the, the towels, so the yep. paint's pretty good. But like I said before, all the seams are full of this junk. And yep. they just get, the, get in there over the years. And so the idea is the towel can't reach behind, but this brush can. So you just want to see I'm holding it like yep. this, and I'm just kind of thinning it out. So the, yep. the brush so comes in the round, you know, it's yep. always like round. And I flatten it out. So that way you get in the seam. That's it. And I just give a little wiggle, all right. and that'll kind of shake out and agitate out any of the little stuff that's behind all these seams. And when you feel like you're full, come back in and all try right. again. Sound good? Sounds good. With everything now agitated and brushed, Brett power washed the remaining dirt and grime off the car. Then Brett asked about the clay bar and wanted to know what it does, especially on paint this rough to the touch. With this nice and wet. Yep. And you go back and forth and I'm barely pushing. Yeah. And you do little motions like this. Yeah. Those little motions 
eventually will pick up when it's really dirty. See the yellow? Oh yeah, wow. Isn't that neat? That's very cool. Yeah, so that's all. So it's dirt that's hiding and that you're getting up with that. That's correct. Wow. So here, take this. Yep. With Put your fingers on it like this. Yep. Like maybe three fingers. All right. Get, get your finger all the way up on this. Like that. Right. And then, no, and then barely, you just go back and forth. And then every once in a while, you, you want to have some lubrication with the soap. Yeah. Go up here a little bit. You'll probably get some more stuff. Uh, there you go. Get nice and put a little bit of pressure on there. There you go. And just do a nice little pattern. Look at all that. Wow. That's insane. That's all that yellow stuff. Yep. That's actually rust. Now what's cool is when the car is wet like this, you can actually envision what it's going to look like yeah. after it's detailed. Absolutely. Because the water covers up all the scratches. It kind yeah. of fills in all the gaps. Obviously it can't stay wet all the time. Yep. It'll, it'll dry eventually. Yeah. But this kind of gives you like you stand back and you go, all right, cool. If I polish this yep. and I put wax or coatings or sealants or whatever on there, it's going to look like this when, it, when it's done. Yeah. So hopefully in a couple of days when I'm done with it, yeah. it's going to look as shiny as it That's looks awesome. right now. Kind of cool, eh? Very cool. Listen, I appreciate your I help. I appreciate you. No, this Thank is you. amazing. I hope you had fun. Oh, a lot of fun. This is awesome. Washing cars is a blast, isn't it? Yeah. It's very cool and very therapeutic. Very it is, awesome. It is indeed. So I'm going to start polishing and working on uh, the rest of the car. And I think you have a tennis match, do you not? Yes. <laughs> That's right. Thanks You're again. Welcome. Huge thank you to Brett for all his help with the detail and, of course, his patience for listening to me yammer on for two hours about detailing. You're a great friend, and I was glad to finally have you in the studio. Next up, after claying the paint, I put the car in the lift and removed the wheels. Underneath, dirty and with bits of rust to be expected from the northeast driving, but not the worst I've ever seen, so I gave it a quick bath. Same thing on the calipers and the wheel wells. In one of the wheel wells, I found what I think is a mud dauber. I found one on the engine compartment of one of the two Mercedes I bought down south from Rusty. I'm pretty sure this is the same thing, but if you know what it is, let me know in the comments. Something was living in there at the time that I removed it, so yikes. For the engine compartment, I used Titan 12 degreaser, plum wheel cleaner, and a lot of scrubbing as it hadn't been cleaned in what seemed like years. Next were the armpits of the vehicle, AKA the door jams. Having clean armpits is critical to maximizing the value upon resale. So spend some time here. So to blow out the trapped water and the inevitable leftover dirt, I'm using my new Alex Alpert designed Metrovac Super Vacuum Blow Unit. Now he hand sharpied every square inch of white canister and it's the real definition of functional art. I'll have a video, I'll put a link down below. You can see the entire thing happen, it's really cool. Anyhow, to get your Super Vacuum Blow as well as a ton of other models for everything from pet grooming to computer cleaning to motorcycle to automotive cars, etc., visit metrovac.com and use ammo at checkout for a 10% discount as a thank you to our viewers. With the car now dry, I clean the wheels with plum and brute wheel cleaner. Afterwards, I focused on the interior, which was covered in dog hair and dirt. Step one is to vacuum up the heavy stuff first because step two is going to make a total mess on the interior. For the carpets, I'm testing out a new diffuser attachment that blows turbulent air into the fibers and a hose attachment to remove the lifted dirt once it becomes airborne. It's pretty cool. Nonetheless, it's still a work in progress, but I'm always tinkering with new ideas. So more to come as I improve the airflow to avoid too much downward suction. More on this later. As for the rest of the interior and specifically the dog hair, I'm using the diffuser with no reservoir attached to it. Now this one is extremely powerful and turbulent to remove dog hair really easy. 
Keep in mind, this is only mechanical cleaning, meaning no chemicals have been introduced at this point in the video. For a deeper stain like the one you're seeing here, you need to have precise cleaners and precise pHs for that particular stain. Again, more on this in a little bit. I'll show you the steps to get that out. For the plastic and leather, I'm using lather, an interior brush, and the steam machine because of the dog slobber and the canine smell everywhere on the inside. Again, everything I'm using here can be found at AmmoNYC.com. As always, guys, thanks for supporting the channel. For the carpet stains, I'm first using shag, then a red stiff bristle brush. Then I go in and steam vacuum the lifted dirt up and out of the carpet. As you can see, the shampooing was desperately needed. Afterwards, I use the diffuser again just to help blow out and wick the fibers dry. It will decrease the amount of time required for it to dry on its own. I repeated these exact same steps on the Alcantara and the floor mats as well. On the trunk cover, there was a stain, and after closer inspection, it was in fact dried up poop, which makes sense because of all the dog hair, so I used Digest Enzyme Cleaner to clean the germs first. After a few minutes of it just sitting there and doing its work, then I steamed, reapplied Digest again, and then steam vacked, to, meaning to suck up all the poop, and yes, the brown that you're seeing going through the wand, that is not dirt. <laughs> Finally, I cleaned up the filthy mats and gave the interior some time to dry so I could focus on the exterior cleanup. Okay, at this point, the interior is done. It looks a thousand times better and it's drying. I wanted to focus on the outside by polishing, but before we can do that, I have to remove the clear bra here. This is what they call a shark fin. Obviously, it looks like a shark fin. There's some extra bits around here. Normally, I can polish that, but because this is so old, plus the fact that it has mold growing on the edges, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I'm just gonna remove it as opposed to polishing. So what we're gonna use is boiling hot water. We let it sit for a little bit so it doesn't scold you, but we are gonna put it on here. Then maybe a towel. I wanna see how it reacts, but the towel helps keep keep the heat in as opposed to just pouring water on it and then it's gonna dissipate quickly. You put the towel, really kind of heat that up gently, slowly, and then you can kind of go in with a plastic razor blade and then peel this slowly. Now the trick here is hopefully this whole thing comes off as one piece. If it comes off in thousands of little bits, I'm gonna be here for a while and my fingernails are gonna be killing me. So let's get in and try it and see what happens. So to get started removing the old bra, I used two electric hot water kettles so that I could use one while the other is heating up, sort of like leapfrogging each other so I don't have to wait for one to heat up. It just keeps the process moving. First, pour the hot water over the bra to soften the old glue, then use a plastic razor blade to start peeling. You can also use a towel to keep the hot water on the paint for longer. Now, the problem with the old bra is that it can sometimes come off in a billion tiny little pieces, which is super annoying and really time consuming. Now, there are tools like rubber wheels that can be really helpful here, but one, the paint is super soft, so I'm worried that I might blow through it, but two, more importantly, I actually don't have one handy at the moment because I used it up on a previous car, so for now, I'm just going to use a plastic razor blade and a ton of patience. Okay, at this point in the process, you'll notice that I'm actually using a real razor blade here because the glue is rock hard and my patience is completely gone. Now, although it looks like I'm removing paint, I'm not. I'm gently shaving the top layer of the bra to expose the glue underneath. Once the top part is actually off, then I can use rapid remover or other chemical to remove or disintegrate or kind of chew up the glue. Obviously, this technique is not recommended for everyone, and it will cut the paint if you're not experienced, so be forewarned, take your time, but you should stick with the plastic razor blade unless you completely lose your mind like I just did. With the top of the bra now gone and wrapper remover working on the glue, then I can use a plastic razor blade in a scooping motion to sort of scoop up the glue as it becomes thinner or disintegrated from the chemicals. Again, if you have a wheel at this point, you would use it and it would make your life a whole lot easier, but I don't have one.
As for the rest of the paint, the swirls and the scratches and the scuffs and whatever, all normal daily driving issues, we need to fix them. First, I used a sheer wool cutting pad on a Rupe S21 with exfoliate polish. Now, after a few passes, you can see the 50-50 was much better, even on silver paint. But if you look closely into the paint, you can, of course, see that the swirls are minimized and a couple of things are gone. That's great. However, there's a more important thing going on. The paint is now clean. You can see those little dots are now gone. That's stuff that we couldn't get out with the clay bar. So there's now more depth and shine compared to what it was before. So polishing isn't just about removing the swirls. It is. It's very important. I get it. But at the same time, you're also exfoliating. You're cleaning the pores of the paint. And by default, it's going to look a whole lot better when you're done. Now, I'm aware that I'm a little bit crazy, but I think of paint very much like skin, like our own skin, and that it needs to be exfoliated and deep cleaned from time to time to really see its true depth and richness, and this is a perfect example. When preparing a vehicle for sale, don't neglect light polishing, either headlight or taillight. It's kind of like glass. It's sort of just a forgotten part of the detail. It's very important, especially if you have yellowing lenses. What's cool about this is yellowing lenses are super easy to fix. Each light may require a different type of technique, but this is what worked on these lights, so here we go. First, I used 1500 grit by machine and or hand, then 3000 grit by machine and or hand. Again, I used hand in the tight spot, sometimes the machine can't get into that little area. Then I compounded with a three inch sheer wool pad and finished up with the waffle foam pad for a mirror-like finish. However, the most important step after all of this is to reapply apply protection to avoid fading or yellowing from this reoccurring immediately again. Again, you took the jacket off the headlight. And once you take that jacket off, you have to clean everything and then put a new jacket back on. That's what we did here. And we're going to do that in the next step when we put Reflex Pro on. In the next step to do just that, I'm using 50-50 isopropyl alcohol mixture to wipe down the exterior of the car. Everything I can possibly do, including the headlights, of course. Then I applied Reflex Pro 2 to the paint and the headlights. Work one section at a time, allowing the coating to rainbow or to cure, which is usually about 10 to 30 seconds. Again, depends on the ambient temperature and what's going on outside. Then buff off and level with multiple final wipes. You're going to have to give it a few wipes to really kind of level that in and you'll start to see the shine as it hardens. It's unbelievable. With the paint now curing in Reflex Pro, I then cleaned the windows with Obey, added Gelee Pro to the wheels with a higher heat content, then installed them back on the car. They look fantastic. Added mud tire dressing to the rubber and the smooth black trim. But for the faded textured trim, I used Frame Pro to restore the heavily sunburned rough plastic parts. All right, so we're going for a ride in our STI. This thing is so fun. Here I come. Oh, I already got looks. See that guy give me thumbs up. This thing is pretty cool. So it's running. I'm sure you're gonna need to do a tune up and oil and brakes and all that kind of stuff. It's been sitting a while, but the fact that it's sitting a while and I can do this, whoa. <laughs> oh, this thing is just too cool. Ah, for a car that's been sitting this long, this is pretty good. So for the record, we checked all the oil, everything. It is uh, topped up, but like anything else with a new car, you should change everything. Definitely suspension, brakes, have somebody go through it. But this is a gem. Now it's nice to clean the interior. Is absolutely perfect outside has some rock chips and whatnot but obviously this guy drove the car and, and loved it but i'll tell you this thing is really fun it's gonna be a great find for anybody who brings it home i hope you guys bid on this car this thing is really great it needs a quick little oil change a little tune up and you're ready to go and more importantly you're contributing to a really great cause this thing is cool <laughs>